You know when you're in the middle of taking a shower or refilling your coffee or having a mental breakdown that 2020 is not yet over and suddenly an idea pops into your mind, but there isn't anywhere to write it down and just like that, that brilliant idea is lost. Yeah, that's happened to me all the time. That is until I discovered things. Now I've been using this to-do list app for about three months now and I've already invested $60 into it. So there's really no going back now. And this video is not sponsored, but I did wanna show you exactly what things is, why it's taken me so long to figure out my ideal to-do list system and show you how I set up things for my own workflow. So yeah, let's uh, get things started. Now Things was built by this company called Cultured Code back in 2007, but to this day, it's still a small nine person team based out of the small city in Southern Germany. <clears throat> And if I was worldly enough to travel Europe and we still weren't in a pandemic, I definitely want to go see this place. Anyways, Things is a to-do list app. There's no fancy note taking or databases or Kanban boards, but that's actually what I like about it. Culture Code has spent 10 years fine tuning an app that is just a to-do list. And I think that shows. Its design is clean and minimalist and has just enough features to suit a power user without appearing cluttered or overwhelming. It's well organized. There are just enough levels of hierarchy that makes it easy to structure your tasks. And it's seamlessly incorporated into the Apple ecosystem, allowing for by far one of the best desktop and mobile experiences that at least I've seen. So yes, this is just a to-do list app and there probably are far more exciting things for me to be raving about. But let me show you why I'm so hyped about this app. Now for nearly every to-do list system that I've tried, there's always been something missing. So like every other kid, I used a planner in school. Something like, uh... yeah, something like this. And besides scheduling my problem sets and exams and once a week mandated fun, I also use this for my to-do list. But the problem here was portability. I didn't always have my planner on me, like when I was in the dining hall or in lecture or, you know, partying in Boston. So once I graduated, I switched to something smarter. Now I do admit Trello works pretty well as a to-do list and I love the satisfaction of dragging a task into the done column. Now maybe I'm nitpicking, but I still feel like Trello's UI is too clunky. I don't like all of the extra fields on a task card or having to periodically clear the done column or waiting for pages to load. I just need something simple. So I went back to basics with Notability on my iPad. I loved how customizable this was, how I could make a to-do list as simple or complex as I needed without any restrictions. But there was just too much friction of thinking about whether my iPad or my pencil was charged and then opening Notability and then finding my to-do list. Then I developed this to-do list template in Notion, which I actually used for a couple of months. And theoretically, this checked all the boxes, but there still were issues. Even though I always have my phone on me, the Notion app isn't great, so I never wanted to use it on my phone. And yes, this was seamlessly integrated into my Notion workflow, but whenever I wanted to check my to-do list, I had to navigate away from what I was working on. And with some of Notion's speed issues and my general distractibility, this was a recipe for disaster. And yes, this was aesthetic, but after a few months, I couldn't be bothered to pick an emoji and cover art when I just wanted to get to work. And yes, I know I'm being extremely picky, but my time is valuable, so I'm always thinking, there must be something better out there, something more optimal. So, at least for now, this has been checking all the boxes. With the inbox page, I can easily jot down an idea without having to think. I don't need to think about how to classify a task or what I need to complete it or where to store it or how to format it. In fact, there's even a shortcut on Mac. I think it's control space that allows me to quickly enter a task without switching apps. Now, besides the Mac and iOS apps, the things widget on my phone and watch app, albeit simple, are another reminder of my to-do list, so I never have an excuse not to use it. And that brings me to the biggest drawback of things, which is that it's only available on Apple devices. And as a former Android user, that really sucks to hear. And unfortunately, I don't think they're gonna do anything about it, at least not anytime soon. Now, I do admit I was initially very turned off by the lack of customization options in things. But now I'm 
actually cool with it. Maybe it's a sign of a new grown up Harshi bar, but I actually really like how everything looks so clean and consistent and how there aren't any more bells and whistles than I actually need. And even though this app looks really simple, every single aspect of its organization is incredibly well thought out and intentional. Each to-do can be customized by adding notes or a checklist or a deadline or when you're planning on completing it. It's not as clunky as Trello, but a lot more powerful than just a simple checkbox. And multiple to-dos can be grouped together in a project. Within a project, you can have multiple headers to group similar tasks and multiple projects can be stored in an area. So there are tons of ways to structure your tasks to keep things organized. There's also this logbook feature that shows your completed tasks. I really like using this to go back and see what I completed on certain days, kind of like a diary. Now I'm pretty big about having fair pricing and Things is pretty good about this because they just require a one-time purchase. The Mac app is $50 and the iPhone app is $10, which comes out to $5 a month for the first year of use. Even though this is quite the investment, I like the fact that I'll never have to pay again for this app, but will still get access to lifelong updates. Now, I do want to point out that even though this is a paid app, it is not end-to-end -end encrypted. In their privacy policy, they state that they use TLS encryption, but that no method of transmitting or storing data is 100% secure, so we cannot guarantee the security of your information you transmit to us. So this isn't anything unusual, it's in line with most note-taking apps, but it is something to keep in mind. Now, I've seen far more complicated setups online, and mine is still a work in progress, but if you want to see it, here it is. Of course, the first thing I did when setting up things was making an area for YouTube. Now, at the top of the page, we see a list of all of my projects with progress wheels, like all of my upcoming videos and, uh, oh, don't look at that. And below the projects are just random errands that I want to get to eventually. For example, this past holiday break, after I had run out of Christmas movies to watch, I got bored and found myself actually taking on and completing these tasks. I was very proud of myself. And if I were more organized, I would probably set aside when exactly I want to complete these tasks, which I can do by typing command S and setting a date. And besides that, I got bigger, even more long-term projects in the someday section. For example, while I have no plans on working on my website anytime soon, when I'm ready, I can easily convert this to its own project. Now, if we jump to a particular video, we can see this production checklist, which I separate with headers representing each phase of production. And with each video, all I have to do is just duplicate this blank template. And when I start planning a video, I usually assign the days on which I want to complete each task. And of course, once I actually start working, I'll end up adding more granular tasks as I go. Things like picking a certain song or filming a particular shot. But this is just the general framework to start with. And the main issue with this system that I frankly have no solution to is the redundancy between this and my Notion content calendar. For example, sometimes I plan my titles here and sometimes I do it on Notion and I often lose track of what information is where. So yeah, it's kind of annoying, but I should probably be better about streamlining my workflow. Now, besides the YouTube pages, I usually have this today page open on my second monitor. I usually start off my day by reviewing these tasks, which are separated by project and rearranging them in order of completion. And there are also a few features that I don't use but could be helpful to others. For example, if I actually had Zoom meetings, which thankfully I don't, I could integrate my calendar right into things. And if I were more organized, I could also label my tasks with tags like this. Or I could make recurring events for things like errands. But uh, yeah, I'm just... Uh, too lazy. Oh, I also use things for things outside of work, which has been surprisingly beneficial. For example, to make my procrastination more productive, I have this watch list that I can check off during Netflix binges. I also keep our grocery list here for our bi-weekly escapades into the public. And to curb late night panic shopping regret, I got another list just for returns. So yeah, it's just nice to have a single place to dump all of these different things that I would have otherwise forgotten about. It's been a lot more useful than I would have expected. 
Now, if I convince you to try out things, that's great. But really, my goal here is just to show you that my productivity system is far from perfect and that no single app will work for everyone, nor can one app do absolutely everything. So it's just about trial and error and figuring out what works for you. That being said, I struggled a lot to find a good to-do list system. So I'd love to know how do you manage your tasks? And uh, yeah, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, oh. I don't like it. Need coffee?